Okay, this lesson is for section 2.1, quadratic equations and theory about quadratic equations. Um, today's objectives are just to be able to use the quadratic formula to find roots of an equation of those roots. So I first just want to start off with the definition of a root. We've been over this before, but a, a function's root is a solution to the equation. It's an x-intercept, and it's the location where the function gr function's graph crosses the x-axis. So, for example, this would have three real roots here. Okay, so the graph of this function here would have three real roots. Now, um, the product and sum of roots theorem for a quadratic, any quadratic of the form x squared plus bx plus c, note, notice that uh, a equals 1 here, okay? a must equal 1. The roots, let's call them r1 and r2, have the following properties. When you multiply the two roots, it's going to equal the c term, and when you add the two roots, it's going to be the opposite of the b term. Okay, so let's put that into um, use here when we want to find this first example, a quadratic function with integer coefficients whose roots are 2, ne 2 minus root 3 over 5 and 2 plus root 3 over 5. Okay, so based off of our product and sum of roots theorem, we know that r1 times r2 is going to equal c. We also know that if we add our two roots together, it'll equal the opposite of b. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do some calculations using this as r1 and this is r2. So r1 times r2 would look like this. Now when I multiply here, I want to use a really um, helpful tool for myself, which is um, think of the backwards factoring for like x squared minus 4. We know that that's going to factor into x plus 2 and x minus 2, right? So if we were to multiply these out, I can skip straight to this. Well, it's kind of the same idea here. This is almost like having, you know, x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I know that the numerators here, when I multiply these, will be just like with x squared minus 4. The numerators here are going to multiply 2 squared minus root 3 squared, right? So if I simplify that, I end up with 4 minus 3 as my numerator. So it's just a shortcut. Otherwise, you could, if you wanted to, you could FOIL this every single time and multiply all of these terms out. But I don't want to do that, so I'm just going to use the shortcut. And again, it comes from, if we know that this factors into x plus 2 and x minus 2, that means that if I were to multiply this all back out, I would get this. It's just the first term squared and the second term squared. Okay? So this is just applying difference to squares again. We're squaring the first term, squaring the second term. And that's about it. All right, now in the de denominator, obviously 5 times 5 is 25, so we get 1 25th. So that means that the C is 1 25th, okay? And let's find the opposite of B by adding those two together. So 2 minus root 3 over 5 plus 2 plus root 3 over 5. And since the denominators are already the same, I'm going to have a pretty easy job of just adding the numerators. So I have 2 plus 2, which gives me 4, and negative 3, root 3, plus root 3 is going to cancel, and I'm left with 4 fifths. Okay, so now I have my coefficients, right? I have x squared um, plus bx plus c equaling 0, because for sum of roots and products theorem, we need a to equal 1, so that's why it's of this form. I'm going to substitute in what I just found, so the opposite of b is 4 fifths, which means that b is negative 4 fifths, so I have x squared minus 4 fifths x, and then my c term is 1 25th equals 0. Okay, now the question though here asks us for integer coefficients, and right now I don't have integer coefficients, right? I have rational numbers, but they're not integers. So what I need to do is actually multiply to get these to be integers by 25, right? If I multiply by 25, now I end up with 25x squared minus 20x plus 1 equaling 0. So now I have a quadratic equation with all integer coefficients. Okay, now in example 2a and b, um, we're just going to find the product and sum of the roots for each of these quadratics. So I have a, a different method for each one of these. Um, the first one I want to complete the square, and for the second one I just want to use quadratic formula. So you guys can go ahead and pause it if you want to and try it on your own. Otherwise, um, I'm just going to go through this right now. 
Okay, so um, in this first example, I can't just go ahead and solve this because this for one is not equal to zero. So I actually have to um, foil this left side out. So I'm going to foil the, the left side of this uh, equation. And oops, it's an eight. So minus eight equals one. Now I'm going to complete the square. All right, so completing the square means I need to move this term over to the other side. So I'm going to add eight over here and I have x squared plus two x equaling nine. Now for completing the square, usually I have an a term that I need to um, factor out of there, but in this case I don't because my leap coefficient is, is already one. So all I have left to do now is to cut this number in half. So half of two is one. And then I'm going to square it to complete the square. So I have x squared plus 2x plus 1. And again, this number is coming from taking this number in half and then squaring it. And then on the other side, I still have the 9. I need to balance my equation to make that um, an okay, you know, I have to always balance my equation because I can't just add a number on one side and not add it on the other. So I'm going to add 1 there. And then I factor the left side. So that's x plus 1 squared equaling 10. And now I can just use the square root uh, method here to solve this quadratic. So I'm just going to square root both sides. So I have x plus 1 equaling positive or negative root 10. And if I move over the 1, I have negative 1 plus or minus root 10. Okay, so um, now that I know what my solutions are, or my roots, I'm going to now find the product and the sum. So the product, let's multiply those out. And let's use our shortcut here. We know that we can just square the first term, which is going to give me 1, and then subtract away the square of the second term, which is going to give me 10, and I get negative 9. So the product is negative 9, and the sum, so negative 1 plus root 10 plus negative 1 minus root 10. The root 10s are going to cancel, and I'm left with negative 2. So the sum is negative 2. If we look back at our quadratic here, not our very original one, but the one that looks almost like it's in this, um, the term ax squared plus bx, not ax squared, sorry, x squared plus bx plus c. You're going to notice that the product, right, negative 9 here, if you were to subtract this 9 over the other side, um, is ending up being our c term, right? Isn't that what the roots, the, you know, the, the product of the roots theorem says that this is going to be our c term? And this number here is supposed to be the opposite of b. And in fact, it is, right? b is positive 2, so that's the opposite of b. All right, let's do problem number b now, or problem b. I'm going to erase this here. And OK, let's do quadratic formula. So let's first move over that 2. And I think you guys can go ahead and just set up the quadratic formula. And let's get to the solutions, and then um, we'll uh, do the rest of the Okay, so I got my two roots for this uh, quadratic, and now I'm going to find the product and the sum. Okay, so the product here, 5 plus root 35 over 5 times 5 minus root 35 over 5. It looks a little bit more complex, but again, you're just going to apply that same rule, a um, little shortcut that we did before. So we're going to square the first term in the numerator, which gives me 25, and subtract away the term the second term squared, which is going to be 35, over 5 times 5, which is 25, and this is going to simplify to negative 10 20 fifths, um, which is negative 2 fifths. Okay. Now the sum, sorry, I have to rewrite this every time. These are obviously going to cancel, leaving me with 10 fifths or 2. Okay, so I want to take a look at these because remember that um, the product is supposed to be the c term, and your sum is supposed to be the opposite of b. Okay, now if we look at our original quadratic here, those don't really match up. And that's because this factor here, um, this lead coefficient here, is supposed to be a 1. So if I were to make that a 1 and divide out by negative 5, I'd end up with a new quadratic, which would be y squared minus 2y minus 2 fifths equaling 0. Okay, now that actually does match up, right? The C term here, negative 2 fifths, and the B term is the opposite here of 2. So that actually does check off. So you just have to make sure that every time you're doing it, you have to have the form x squared plus bx plus c. There can be no leap coefficient here other than 1, okay? 
Okay, so for this next part, we're going to talk about uh, the discriminant. Um, and this is basically a review, again, of Algebra 2 stuff. But uh, if we have our quadratic formula here, if we look at the discriminant, the discriminant is the inside of that radical here, b squared minus 4ac. Now, there's three cases for what this could equal, right? b squared minus 4ac could equal 0. It could be greater than 0, and it could be less than 0. So let's figure out um, in each case what that would look like. So here in this first picture here, I have two real roots. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, that means that it's positive, right? So if this is positive on the inside, if your discriminant is positive, then you're going to get two real roots, OK? Because we'd obviously be you know, adding and subtracting away some number. Let's say it's 32. This would always guarantee that we're going to have, no matter what the rest of this you know, quadratic formula is, we're always going to have two real roots. Now, if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, meaning it's negative, so if our discriminant is negative, then we get no real roots. And we end up with um, oops, right roots first. We end up with complex solutions. So this is the graph here with no real roots. Notice how it's not actually crossing the x-axis, right? There's no real roots here. Um, so the last case is when b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0. And in this case, you get one real root. And it's actually a double root because you'd end up with the same number. So like, let's say I have you know negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, the inside ends up being 0 divided by 6. Well, when I simplify this, I would just get the same root, right? There's not two different roots here, because if I add 0 and subtract 0, I still get the exact same thing. All right, so it's kind of a brief little review. The reason why it's called a double root is because it's bouncing back off. But we'll talk more about that in a later chapter. OK, so we're going to apply that knowledge here when it asks us specific questions like, how many roots does this quadratic have? Well, it looks really messy, right? This looks really messy. It looks like it'd be hard to solve. But don't worry about it. All you need to do is figure out what b squared minus 4ac is. OK, if it's positive, it's going to have two real roots. If it's negative, it will have no real roots. And if it's equal to 0, then it'll have one real root. So that's all that this question is asking. So all we need to do is test b squared minus 4ac. So we're going to test the discriminant. So our b term here, this is just a matter of making sure we can figure out our b term. It's this number here, root 2 over 3. Okay, Our a term, I guess I could have gone in order, but our a term is just root 3 over 6. And our c term is negative 3 fourths. So I'm going to square root 2 over 3. It's representing my b squared. Subtract from that 4 times uh, root 3 over 6, my a term, multiplied by my c term. So I'm just going to simplify this. And again, this is done without a calculator. So let's square root 2. We get 2 ninths minus 4 times. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to cancel out the 4s so I don't have to worry about that. I'm also going to cancel this out. This 3 goes into 6 twice. And I'm left with root 3 over 2. OK, so let's take a look at this number. So let's approximate 2 ninths minus root 3 over 2. I want to find a common denominator here of let's see, 18. So that's 4 eighteenths minus 9 root 3. So think about 9 root 3 and how big that is compared to the number 4. So even if we don't actually know what this is going to equal, we can approximate that this is going to be negative. Because it is negative, there are no real solutions or roots to this quadratic. So there are none for this quadratic. OK, I'm crazy. I actually just realized I made a mistake back here. Um, so I guess it's really important to make sure you uh, check your signs. If you look at this, this term here, that whole thing about um, trying to estimate. But that gives you the idea of how you can estimate, at least. So I'm glad I at least showed you that, even though it was the wrong way to do it do this particular problem. But OK, so it is positive, which means it has two real roots. So sorry about that. Hopefully you didn't get through that and get confused by that. All right, let's do number four then. So number four says, find k such that there is exactly one root. So we are missing this, this term here, but we know we want to get one root. 
which means we know that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac should equal 0. So we're going to solve an equation where this is true. So let's plug in. So for b, we have root 3k, and we're going to square that. Minus 4 times my a term, which is 5, times my c term, which is 4, set equal to 0. So let's square this. When I square root 3k, I just get 3k. So 3k minus 80 is supposed to equal 0. So I'm going to add 80, divide, and k should equal 80 thirds in order for this quadratic here to have exactly one root. All right, now there are just, I think, two more example problems here um, where you're going to determine the number of real roots the equation has. So um, again, you're just going to test b squared minus 4ac. Check to see if it is positive, negative, or equal to 0. You guys can do these problems um, and check them with the solution. Or you can continue to listen to this video because it's pretty long already, but I know you're having so much fun. All right, so here we go. Here's A. We're going to square B, so I get 9 minus 4 times A times C. And this is a negative number, so this has no real roots. In B, if I square B and take away 4AC here, um, I end up with 1 squared, or 1, sorry, minus 4 times negative 3 times 2. And because this is two negatives, making a positive, this is also going to be positive. I don't even need to know what it's going to be. I know it has two real roots. Okay, this is the end of our first section.